November 20th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Revelation chapter 9 from the New Testament. Then the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. He opened the shaft of the abyss, and smoke rose out of it like smoke from a giant furnace. The sun and the air were darkened with smoke from the shaft. Then out of the smoke came locusts onto the earth, and they were given power like that of the scorpions of the earth. They were told not to damage the grass of the earth or any green plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their forehead. The locusts were not given permission to kill them, but only to torture them for five months, and their torture was like that of a scorpion when it stings a person. In those days, people will seek death but will not be able to find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. Now the locusts looked like horses equipped for battle. On their heads were something like crowns similar to gold, and their faces looked like men's faces. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like iron breastplates, and the sound of their wings was like the noise of many horse-drawn chariots charging into battle. They have tails and stingers like scorpions, and their ability to injure people for five months is in their tails. They have as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, Apollyon. The first woe has passed, but two woes are still coming after these things. Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a single voice coming from the horns on the golden altar that is before God saying to the sixth angel, the one holding the trumpet, Set free the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Then the four angels who had been prepared for this hour, day, month, and year were set free to kill a third of humanity. The number of soldiers on horseback was 200 million. I heard their number. Now this is what the horses and the riders look like in my vision. The riders had breastplates that were fiery red, dark blue, and sulfurous yellow in color. The heads of the horses look like lion's heads, and fire, smoke, and sulfur came out of their mouths. A third of humanity was killed by these three plagues, that is, by the fire, the smoke, and the sulfur that came out of their mouths. For the power of the horses resides in their mouths and in their tails, because their tails are like snakes, having heads that inflict injuries. The rest of humanity, who had not been killed by these plagues, did not repent of the works of their hands, so that they did not stop worshipping demons and idols made of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk about. Furthermore, they did not repent of their murders, of their magic spells, of their sexual immorality, or of their stealing. God, it's, of course, incredibly heartbreaking to think that people aren't going to heaven and will end up in hell. But I guess I wish I could just get it through their heads of some of these things that are talked about in the Bible. I wish I could somehow make them believe it. I know that that is your department, <laughs> not mine. But the fact that the person that they're working for, <laughs> the devil himself, and the agenda that they're propagating, the fact that he will, and does even today, but especially at the end of, end of this world, he will go after these people that have worshipped him and kill them without a thought. I know people think that they're just going about their lives, they're just living day to day, uh, doing what the world expects of them. I, I've kind of heard everything, and I used to be that way too. But if they truly understood what the devil's plan is for them and how truly little he cares about them, I would say he doesn't care about them obviously at all. And that his plan is to destroy them in his desire for power of this earth. I don't know, I guess if they don't believe in that, it's kind of hard to get them to believe in you or understand your sovereignty. And again, I'm thankful that ultimately that's left up to you and, and not to my abilities. 
But anytime we talk about the devil or I read about him or study that part of the, the Bible, the piece that always, always amazes me, fascinates me, and is my favorite is the fact that we know that he can do nothing without your say-so. That he, even though he acts like he's not, he is still under your control. That ultimately, you have authority over him. And we can see that in this particular verse in Revelation very clearly. That he doesn't get to do anything without your say-so. In this particular case, you have even limited the amount of people that he's allowed to kill. One-third. And that's it. You're even controlling how many of his people he's allowed to kill. Um, how many people are allowed to be tortured by these little scorpion flying things. That must make him incredibly angry, God. I am thankful that I serve a sovereign God. A sovereign God whose breadth of power I understand so a tiny, tiny bit of. And I'm learning more and more just what the word sovereignty in relationship to you truly means, God. How big you are. And amazingly, how small I am in the scheme of things, and yet you care for me so tremendously much. Just like you love every single person who's listening to this video right now. God, I know that end of times things can sound and are a little bit or a lot scary and very frightening. But we have to keep our eyes on your power, your control, your sovereignty, and your love, and your grace, and your mercy. While the devil seeks death, torment, destruction, you only serve up life, love, grace, and mercy. My heart does break for those who follow Satan. And even the fact that most of them don't realize that that's what they're doing. That they're just part of this world. That they're just assimilated into worldly things. They have no idea what's in store for them. God, I do know what's in store for them if they choose life with you. God, if they are your chosen people, allow them to hear your word. Allow their hearts to seek you. Allow their path in this life to be your will. God, allow them to have the seal on their forehead if they are your elect. Keep them from this destruction and protect them. And empower all of us who are supposed to have words in their life to share the Bible with them, the gospel with them, uh, the glorious things that you've done in our lives. Empower us to trust you and be strong in you to share that information. Those incredible stories, personal stories about our lives with other people. I pray this all in your son's name. Amen.